Hey guys, welcome to Texas, South Texas. We are hunting amazing whitetails in South Texas. A first for me, I wanna share it with you. All right, guys, welcome back to episode two. We have been hunting hard for five days. Well, we've been able to harvest quite a few does, and uh, basically we finally got approval on a shooter buck, and we've been hunting this specific buck for five days. And on the last morning, he shows up. And so right now I am waiting to get the perfect shot on this deer. I've had him in range one other time before, but I just couldn't get a shot. There was too many deer behind him, and we're waiting kind of for camera light to be good enough to get a shot. And I'm pretty much full of adrenaline at this point, just trying to wait for the perfect opportunity to send a good arrow at this awesome South Texas buck. Also, I wanted to just let the viewers know that we have two cameras set up here, so when you see me, that's not a fake, Hollywood recreate that's real time as we're just knocked up ready to get a shot waiting for the right moment to let loose. All right, guys, we kind of initially thought dead deer right away, and then we popped out here real quick to see, check for hair, blood, etc. and we got the arrow. Arrow had kind of, the arrow had guts on it and like dark liver blood, and so we're like, okay, it's like impossible to find blood on this sand. We just kind of walked out there a little ways just to see like probably I don't know 50 yards to the edge and kind of see if we could see him edge of the mesquite and backed out and Will's like dude I think we should give him time and I said I'm with you I agree we got to go watch it on a laptop we got to go see and then he all the deer ran the same direction so Will did not see him go left I did not see him go right he ran with all the deer and so we're not finding blood so we're gonna have to weight got liver to where he's going to die in a couple hours we certainly don't want to bump him so we're going to back out eat breakfast and it's the worst part of hunting but you got to do it so we will check back in after breakfast we got a pretty darn good idea where to look first does it show up yeah basically there's the blind and then we think this buck's somewhere right in here we, we saw him go in here so we're going to grid through here and avoid rattlesnakes. That's backwards, it means we mean business. have blood but I mean it was like we picked the up the there. arrow where Brent's standing and then our view my, both our views were basically blocked by this patch of hedge right here mm -hmm. 
We never saw him go this way. We never saw him go that way. We basically, we know he went between these two trees right here. Okay. And then there's a main trail and we stayed off the main trail with our foot tracks. We will, you'll see our boot tracks where we kind of went to the fringe and the then main we- Main trail right here? Between these two trees. Yep. Mm. I like tracks, obviously like- yeah. Squad. His right. His right. Deer running out here. So I didn't, it didn't look like he went down that trail you're on. You don't see any buck tracks. Well, we didn't see any buck tracks, but that's the direction I think he wanted to go. Okay. So. What's, is there like a little ravine or anything down here? We got from here to the fence. Got his road on. Got him! Got him! Didn't go 20. Yeah! You rolling? Was that Brent? Brent and J uh, Justin. They didn't even like wait to to do the. They weren't gonna even try to trick you. Say? They said, they I, weren't even gonna try I, to trick I, him. I said I within a hundred yards. He's probably right yeah, at a hundred. Yes, yeah, straight cross. Yeah, I was to work out. Okay. No, no, it was clear. <laughs> I mean, it's in the grass. Okay. Yeah, they're right there on the other side of the street. There. Let's go see what he looks like. He's a stud deer, dude. Yeah, Justin. Got him? Yeah. He did go 20 something. For real? Yeah. Oh. Good lord. This dude. I'm glad we gave him time though, man. Oh, absolutely. Who, did you walk up on him, Brent? I saw him from down there. See his belly? I saw or? the white yeah. horns from down there, not even the belly. Holy smokes. He's oh, so God, heavy. Dude. You ready? Give me some of that. That was freaking awesome, brother. Oh my God, Lee. That is so. Tank. Yeah. I, my heart was set on him, but you know, you got to wait for the green light. We got the green light. He leaves, no shot. And then the whole time I'm just like, man, please come back. Please come back. And he didn't show up last night. And I thought for sure we blew our chance, but to get the whole experience, but I'll probably never see anything like this really where I hunt, so it's just special. And then you gotta look at all the, I mean, we'll talk about in the podcast, but you think about all the work and equity and resources to, to build this place and to create this kind of system. It's a formula, yeah. you know? It's amazing, brother. It's really humbling. <laughs> <laughs> I carried Dan's bow. Were you scared handing that? Oh, yeah. Another one. The little yeah. guy. That, that was maybe him about 13 years ago. Dude, why is it so heavy? I'm going to weaken. Use your lower back. It's going to hold me, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a pack meal. Hold on. 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 Dude. Yeah, that is a hammer, man. Congrats, buddy. That's Thanks, awesome. Man. Let's go get you one. That is freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's almost all internal bleeding yep. for him. Yep. You know, like any of even so come out on this side. So proud of that shot. At first, I wasn't. Did you guys get a picture of that exit? That yeah, part. dude. I, when I saw it, I was like, that shot's money. That deer is dead. That's money, dude. This is a great angle. Absolutely. Great angle on that deer. Yeah, per perfection.
call it PSS. Yeah. <laughs> the Panuma shit. The Panuma shit. Now you'll have to get it. Weaver. Well, the Weaver. Is that that? Brad Weaver. Rad. Rad, this is Dan. How are you? Good, Dan. How are you, man? I'm good. I just wanted to make sure before I left, I got a chance to thank you for allowing me to, to hunt your ranch. Uh, you have a good time? This place is incredible, man. Um, I've never hunted Texas, never hunted, you know, I'm, a, I'm like an elk hunter on public land. So uh, cultural shock, but I'm yeah, starting to, I'm starting to get it, man. I start to understand, see what's going on here. Yeah, I am super appreciative, man, because I recognize how much time and resources are put into to, <laughs> to be able to experience this. So thank you again, yeah. man. I, I, I'm leaving here very humbled and grateful. That was uh, the owner of this place. So this guy, uh, like not, not a lot of people have had an opportunity to even hunt here that are just like normal schmucks like me. Like probably nobody, honestly, um, this place, like this deer, there's so many deer here and they they have so much country to cover that it's like, uh, like, they don't even know about this deer. Like we had to like check this deer the first time he came in ever, we couldn't shoot him because they, we had to like ask him, is this like some, is this a deer that you actually want harvested? And uh, it actually took too long to, to process that information and get it back to us. and. I thought I, we'd never see this deer again because these deer are actually normal whitetail. You have to pay attention to the wind. You can't get away with making too much noise. If they smell you, they're gonna blow and run out. It's like it's like real deer hunting in kind of a different area. What I thought it was gonna be was they had every deer named, picked out, and I thought maybe even this deer would like come eat corn out of your hand because that's, you know, I'm kind of naive to this stuff. I've never experienced it and it is not like that at all. And in fact, we hunted this deer for three days and we would, we'd sit AM and PM only. We would sneak in, we would check the wind. We would, we did everything. And we were hunting over a feeder. It is a food source for them. It's like, so it was really cool to, to hunt this deer in a way and kind of experience the vibe of a quote, high fence hunt or whatever. But uh, it's, I don't know how I got an opportunity to hunt here. And I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, this was a high fence deal, but it was not what I thought high fence was. And so it'll be interesting to see what you guys think. Some of you people will thumbs down it. Some people are like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know. And truthfully, I don't care what you think, as long as you understand that no matter what type of hunter you are, rifle, longbow, compound, whatever it is, you know, free range, high fence, low fence, public land, private land, whatever, as long as you are a hunter and you're honest about what you're doing and you're killing and eating what you kill and you're respectful of the resource, you gotta stay united. So we're about to score this buck using the trophy scan. I'll let Cody, he's the CEO of NUMA, I'll let him kind of tell you more about the trophy scan and you guys, we're gonna do it right now. So trophy scan, iPad using Trophy Scan's software. This is the actual 3D scanner, plugs into the iPad. Simple operation, couple buttons. What you wanna do is get the field of view around the animal so you can adjust the depth of field here. So once you get where you want it, start recording. So the white is a point cloud. So we're capturing millions of points around that antler set to create a three-dimensional file. So you can see on the screen here, in real time, capturing all the detail. And the trick is just acting like you're trying to spray paint the antlers. So light is transmitted through the scanner you just have to make sure that the scanner looks at all the surface of the antler. So all underneath. The reason we pin the ears back is just so we don't get the ears in the way. Because the reason we're scanning this right now is for scoring purposes. And then also we'll save the file on the cloud forever. 
So if Dan in the future wants to do a 3D replica in any size from Christmas ornaments to if he wants to print a hood ornament for his truck, we can do that for him. And it's backed up, so God forbid something happens to this mount, Dan, we can always 3D print it for you. Okay, that's it. So once we're back here, we we'll stop the scan. There you have it, 3D model image of Dan's whitetail, beautiful whitetail. Now we can uh, now we can score it. Well, there's another little look at that right there too. Yeah, yeah. I would park right there and walk back. Yeah, that's what I do. Perfect. We got the four circumference measurements that look right, Dan. Invalid points. I don't know score out. It'll score note. I know it's G2, G3, G4, G5, G4. What's the biggest mass score? H. Well, uh, so your uh, yeah, the biggest mass score you have is six and seven eighths. Wow. On the left side of that palmation. Yep. Uh, your inside spread 25 eighths, outside spread 22, 22 and 2 eighths. Guess. 170. 184. He said. What'd you say? He said 182. Okay. Brent, what'd you say, score? I said 180. So we're going by those cousin horses score. Right? Which is what? Um, just gross or uh, net? Or? It is gross. 181. Okay. Wow. Um, Boone and Crockett with deductions 172 and an eighth. PC. And SCI 181 and an eighth. Okay. Awesome. What was the mass? Uh, and he had a six and seven eighths mass on the left side. Total mass? Total mass. So right, 67, 72. Yeah, spread outside 22 and 2 eighths. So that's uh, B and C. Final score here. And then auto populates SCI as well. So, you know, we go by SCI, which is just gross right. score, gross measurement. We're in several deer contests right now, are using this technology to score the deer. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a fair way to do it. It is. It gives that animal credit for you know, all the, the bone it produces on its head, yep. uh, which we believe in. And there's no human error. So yeah. if we scan the deer again, if you scan it, Will scans it, it's going to be the same score. That's so cool. It takes human error out of it. And the best part is now that it's scanned, it's already backed up to the cloud, so it's protected. So That's cool. if it gets stolen, the house burns down, God forbid something happens, you can uh, 3D print it. Awesome, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, the, the South Texas experience. I got to tell you, man, uh, I absolutely had a ball. I will definitely come back. It is not uh, a rigorous 10-day backpack elk hunt on public land in high-pressure area. It's not that. And I love all of it. I love all of hunting. I love hunting. And uh, I love shooting bows. And I love shooting animals with my bow that are going to be on my dinner table. So we'll catch you on the next one.